the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear faithful, we live in times today that are quite difficult for the church and the world. And traditional Catholics uh, have been red-pilled, as, as they say, where we were kind of more aware than the average person about the decline of the church and society. And there's a temptation that can exist among traditional Catholics to lose the virtue of hope. The virtue of hope is, is the virtue by, whereby we, we trust that God will fulfill his promises. It's also the, the virtue whereby we, we trust that, that God is in control, that, that there, there is a God who is all good, and that he rules all things by his providence. So we may be tempted to, to think that, for instance, God has abandoned his church, or God has abandoned uh, the world, or that somehow the grace of God is, is not working anymore when we see these difficult situations. And that to, to, to give in to that temptation is to fall into the sin of despair. Um, it's a sin against the virtue of hope. And I, as I say, I think in the traditional Catholic world, that, that sin uh, is, is more likely, that sin against hope is more likely than the sin on the other side. Which is, which is called the sin of presumption, where we say there's, there's almost too much hope. There's an excess of hope. Um, that being said, the, the, the sin of presumption is what I would, I would like to speak about today. Not, not having too little hope, where you think that, that uh, God is not really taking care of things, but having too much hope. What, what is the nature of presumption, and um, what are the different kinds of presumption? So... While presumption is perhaps not so common in the traditional Catholic world, it is a very common sin in the world at large today. Um, people are much more likely today to despise God's justice than they are to despise His mercy. If you're falling into despair, you're not really honoring God's mercy. You're not thinking He's a merciful God, that, that He's going to come in, He's going to take care of us, that he's going to forgive my sins or whatever. But if you're falling into the sin of presumption, you're despising God's justice. You're, you're thinking of God as someone who is not really going to punish sin. He's, he's not going to, to step in when people are misbehaving and give them what they deserve. But he's going to excuse everything. He's just going to let everything pass. And we, we can see that a person who, who would fall in, into presumption who would think of God in this way as just like this sort of great sugar daddy where, where no matter what everything does, any, anybody does, he just gives everybody heaven. It's just a, sort of a participation award to everybody just by the fact that you're a human being and you live your life, you get to go to heaven no matter what, no matter what you do. Um, if, if you have this impression of God and this is the way you think about God, then we can see clearly how it, it would lead to disrespecting God over time. Think of any authority, anybody who's in a position of authority, and uh, like, like parents for their children. If, if the children get the impression over time that no matter what they do, their parents are never going to punish them, then very quickly they, they lose all respect for their parents. They're, they're not going to um, respect the authority of their parents. They're not going to worry about the authority of their parents. It's always good to have healthy fear for those who are in authority because of the fact that they, they have the position that, whereby they can punish. They can punish wrongdoing. And so if, if we think of God as, as someone who never punishes, then we, we quickly lose all respect for God. It's like we don't have to worry about God. We don't have to, to, to worry about pleasing Him. We don't have to worry about serving Him. Because no matter what I do, there's going to be no consequences. God's, God's not going to step in and do anything. So if, if so many people don't practice religion today, it's because they have this false notion of God. They don't respect God. They don't think of God as someone who punishes, who is, who is just, who gives to people what they deserve when, when they do wrong. How many times have you, have you gone to a funeral, you know, and no matter who it is, people just go up and they say, well, you know, it's so great that so-and-so is, is now in heaven. It, do, it doesn't matter 
what kind of life they lived. They, they could have been an adulterer, they could have been uh, married three times, they could have abandoned their, their, their husband or their, or their wife, um, and, and people are canonizing the person. Why, why are they doing that? Well, quite simply because they believe that God does not punish with the, with the pains of hell. That, that God, no matter what you do in this life, you're going to get heaven. So it would be good for us to consider the two different types of this sin of presumption that St. Thomas Aquinas talks about in his Summa. There's two different ways of falling into this sin. One way is, is where we think that, that we can do everything on our own without the help of God. And the other way is to, is to think that, that God's going to do everything without us doing anything. So the reality is, in, in the supernatural world, is that both God and us have to work. Both have to work. And so you're going to fall into presumption when you, when you think that God's going to do everything, or you're going to do everything, or that you're capable of doing everything. We know that there is a certain type of heretics called the Pelagians. And the, the Pelagians were the ones who thought that we could do everything, that humans could do everything, and we, we don't need God. So if you're considering, how do I get to heaven? Uh, what do I need to do to get to heaven? And do I need God's assistance to accomplish that, to get to heaven? Well, the Pelagians would say, no. We don't need grace to get to heaven. We, we have our own natural powers, and somehow we're able to climb the, the, the ladder to heaven without any assistance from God. This was the teaching of the Pelagians heresy in, in the early centuries of the church. Obviously, this is false. This is ridiculously false. Uh, you know how our Lord says, without me, you can do nothing. But the truth is that we are not able to do anything in the supernatural order without the assistance of God. Just by definition, when we say the word supernatural, we're saying something that's above our nature. When we're saying it's above our nature, we're saying we can't do it. There's not in me, in my native power, anything that, that's capable of doing something on the supernatural level. So uh, this is this wrong, and, and, it's, and it's sinful to, to think that, for instance, um, yeah, I, I don't need God to, to get to heaven. The other extreme that's, that's a more common form of presumption today is to think that God is going to do everything you know, the, the idea of <clears throat> some people that you know, what they do has no influence on whether they get to heaven or not. No matter what they do, they're, they're going to go to heaven. You know, this is, this is the idea of Martin Luther. He, he had this notion that somehow we are so corrupt that we can't really do anything good. And so what we have to do is simply believe that God's going to give us heaven. That, that when we can, we can even sin boldly, we can commit all these sins and keep on sinning, but in order to, to get heaven, all we have to do is just believe that God's going to cover our sins. He's going to give us heaven. Uh, so this is just his saying, sin boldly, but believe more firmly. Uh, and th this is a really terrible Sin. It's a really horrible sin of presumption to, to think this way. To think that, well, you know, I'm bad and I can't be good and that's just the way it is. So I'm going to keep on sinning because I can't avoid it. But I'm just going to say to myself, I trust in God. I trust in God. He's going to give me heaven. I know he will. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm... The, the more conscious I am of how evil I am, the more I'm going to trust that, that God's going to give me heaven. So I may have, I may have committed a murder, and, and uh, I st you know, the person starts to, to feel bad, and like, this is horrible, this is a horrible thing I, I do. And, and maybe they're, they're even thinking to themselves, I should repent of my sin. Um, and then this theology comes in, this theology of presumption comes in, and says, well, actually, that's not what you need to do to get to heaven. What you need to do is simply believe 
that God's going to give you heaven. You see how someone in this, in this frame of mind of this sort of systematic presumption uh, is, is never going to get out of his sin. He's just going to, it encourages a person to, to keep on sinning instead of repenting and reforming their life. They, they would just say to themselves, um, I, I just keep believing that God's going to give me heaven. I just trust, trust in him. Over time, such a person loses sensitivity to sin. Uh, there, there's, this, there's this crushing of the conscience. There, there's this hardening of the heart to their own sins. There's looking beyond the guilt of the sin, um, ignoring the guilt of the sin, trying to suppress the guilt of the sin in order to make this act of presumption towards God. Um, we, we have a lot of examples of this today. <clears throat> Just... It's really in our face how people celebrate their sins. It's, it's, it's rather shocking how, for instance, you, you have the, the Pride Month. We just survived another Pride Month, the month of, of June, to where the, the, these people who are living a lifestyle of unnatural sin, you know, directly against God's nature, and they feel like they, they need to uh, flaunt the, this sin, to, to say, we're really proud of living this lifestyle. And it's clear that, that they, they want to manifest that not only do they feel that this is not wrong, but, but this, is, this is something to boast about. Um, and they're not expecting there, there to be negative consequences to come to them for their behavior. They're, they're not anticipating there's going to be any punishment from God or any, any punishment for nature or whatever um, from, from doing these things. So it's, it's, there's a, it's like an extreme degree of presumption that, that we, can, we can get it, participate in this behavior, engage in this behavior, this horrible behavior, and everything is going to be okay. It's, it's, it's all going to be good. Um, you know, earlier this year, there was a scandal in New York City where um, a funeral was held at, at St. Patrick's Cathedral for a, a transgender prostitute. And, and the priest who gave permission for it, he said, well, I didn't, I didn't really know what it was about. They, they kind of pulled the wool over my eyes or whatever. Um, but, but again, it's, it's an example of these people. They, they want to, to say, uh, they're, they're very happy to have a funeral for one of their own in a cathedral in order to say to the world what we do is just as acceptable as all other forms of behavior. They're, they're so immersed in, in these horrible sins um, and, and so have so hardened their, their hearts to the fact that they're wrong um, that they want to, to advertise it and say we're just as acceptable as everybody else. Um, this is, as I say, it's like an extreme form of, of presumption for them to think that there's absolutely no consequences to them for this behavior. So although this, this sin of presumption, it's, it's, I, I would say it's definitely rarer among traditional Catholics than its opposite, which is the sin of despair, yet it, it certainly can exist among us um, because we're, we're human beings just like everybody else. And so it's because we're afflicted with original sin, we can fall into any, any type of sin, <laughs> just like anybody else can, can fall into any type of sin, so, so can we. Um, and the sin of presumption can sometimes exist among traditional Catholics where we, we, we can become a little bit too secure in our traditional Catholic life in the sense that we, we know that we have more safeguards for the salvation of our souls than, than other people do. Uh, we, are, we are more conscious of what, what the faith teaches and how, how to live the faith. And we, we have these beautiful traditional practices which strengthen us so much. And we can get into the habit of, of thinking that because we're in this traditional Catholic world, that, that God necessarily is going to make sure that we die in the state of grace. That, that because I'm a card-carrying traditional Catholic, and I, and I have it, I live my life in this traditional Catholic world, God's going to make sure that I die in a state of grace and go to heaven. When, of course, there's, there's absolutely no guarantee. And, and if, if a soul is living in a habitual state of mortal sin, if they're constantly falling into mortal sin and living 
in mortal sin, even, even if they're going to confession but, but falling back into mortal sin, um, they, they certainly should not be complacent and, and think that, well, you know, this is this has kind of been the way I've been living my life for, for perhaps years, but I, I, I just expect that, that God's not going to allow me to die in a state of mortal sin, even, even though I'm in mortal sin a lot of the time. I just expect that God's just because I'm going through the TLM and I'm living this traditional Catholic life, at least externally. Um, and the fact is that this is this is presumption. This is presumption. Um, the, the the soul is not doing enough on on his own part or her own part um, to make sure that that they live in the, the, the state of grace. We we know that God gives us enough grace. So that we can live in the state of grace, even in the 21st century world. But there's something that we have to do. We, we have to work hard to cut off all habits of mortal sin in our life and, and, and get to the point to where we're, we're habitually living in the state of grace. And we just can't expect that if we're not doing that, that God's going to give us heaven. That's, that's the presumption on our part. So even if we have many blessings as traditional Catholics and many supports for our faith, we're, we're not, we must not think that they're going to do everything. The, the, the traditional Catholic practices are going to do everything. We're, we, we do not have this theology of the Protestants where, where we just like come to church one day and we answer an altar call and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and then our salvation from that point is just all locked in. And it's, it's all good. I mean, like, once saved, always saved, right? That, that's, what, that's what they say. Um, and then no matter what I do from that point, I've got heaven locked in. We, we believe as Catholics that our salvation, in fact, is never locked in until the day when we die in the state of grace. You know, like, if we, if we die at the moment we die in the state of grace, that's the moment our salvation is locked in. And, and until that point... Uh, we need to continually struggle and strive. We need to do something on our part. God's go, always going to be there with His grace. He's always going to support us with His grace. We need to do our part to live that, that life of grace. So, my dear faithful, we got to make sure that our beautiful Mass and our beautiful traditional ca- uh, Catholic practices do not make us lazy in this effort uh, to, to save our soul because our salvation is a work both of God and of ourselves. So let us work hard for that salvation so that we can make it to heaven. Well, we know that, that one day God will fulfill all of his promises to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.